This world-renowned team of whale experts is trying to unravel a deadly mystery. Last year, again, we had seven, and this year, this is the 10 carcass that we found this year. I just can't believe that this just happened today. Yeah, there is also. For more than a decade, the number of belugas has been steadily decreasing, and no one knows why. Is there a possibility that um, the toxicity has something to do with this particular fatality? Today, we're heading to the legendary Saguenay St. Lawrence Marine Park, home of the southernmost population of beluga whales in the world. Hi, how's it going? Bonjour, Bonjour. good to meet you. It's not a beautiful day, but there is always a place where there is some sun and there are some whales. So let's try to find some this morning. Oh, here she is. To figure out what the threats are to these animals, Robert and his team collect as much data as they can, starting with photographs. Yeah, we're looking for all the little details that will allow us to identify the, these animals. It's like if their name was written on their back, but it's written very small. We're in a river, and uh, most people wouldn't necessarily think that there are belugas in, in a river system. In the St. Lawrence, where we have a small relic population, they live all year long in the estuary, in the St. Lawrence River. Though for us here, it's sea. We're in salt water. Look, they're looking up. You can see them looking up at us. Those whales were looking up at us. Their eyes were looking up at us. I almost felt like we were making eye contact yeah. right through Who's the water. Who's looking who now? Right in the middle of the, the bird calving season, every day we're expecting to see more calves. So today there's a, a newborn in that group. And then our quest would be to find out who's mom. This is why we have regular encounters with each of these group daily whenever the weather is good. To understand how the animals are related, the researchers need biopsies. So Michelle, I know we're going to be getting biopsies from belugas today, but you are holding what looks like a gun with a fishing rod. What yeah. is this apparatus? Well, we like to call it the biopsy projector instead okay. of a gun, but actually it's a modified 22 caliber gun with a fishing reel on it. With a plank charge, it will project this piston here, which is holding the dart that's actually going to get the sample. But how do you ensure that you don't hurt the whale? Well, we have this valve here that we can adjust. So if the animal is closed, we can lower the power down and then we get it back using the fishing reel. Let's go get some biopsies. So let's go get some. Woo! Right, oh, big piece. Right. Sure shot you are, my goodness. The information we obtain from that is very precious. The biopsies can also provide critical data in the event of a fatality. Oui, hello. C'est encore mieux pour moi. I just received a call. We received information of a, another calf that's stranded this afternoon. It's a very fresh animal. It's uh, about a meter six. That's a baby beluga right It's there. a newborn. Just a few years ago, the team began to notice a frightening trend. These were kind of very rare event. In any year, we would find between one, two, rarely three. We found 10 in 2010, 16 carcass of newborn in 2012. We don't know exactly what is going on, so we're swimming in the middle of big mystery here. What do you hope to find with this biopsy sample? This contains a lot of hope. There's the genetics, but also in the blubber, we want to examine what are the links between the presence of the new contaminant and some of the hormonal activity? So far, their research has led them to one possible chemical culprit, fire retardants. One of the hypotheses is that those fire retardants that we have dumped in the St. Lawrence River, but also everywhere around the planet, may be interacting with the thyroid activity, the glands activity, the, the production of hormones. If the fire retardants are causing the mysterious deaths, there's some good news and some bad news. Good news, some of those important contaminants, the PCBs and the DTC, are on the decline. And they have been for at least a decade and a half. Bad news, new contaminants are entering in the, the food chain. The research is incredibly urgent, but so far this season, things are looking up. Oh, oh there's look at that one. little thing almost a baby boom. All these females had calf last year and they are back this year where they're one year old. So this is good news. 